Hello everyone, this is my uh, first YouTube video ever on the AdLib sound card, which um, is a old sound card for old uh, PC, old retro PCs. Um, so on the right is the car uh, bear card. Um, I have um, manufactured uh, 10 of these cards and I'm going to be soldering together one of them for you guys. This is the first video. Uh, I recorded the intro to this video. I'm recording this video after I finished it, but uh, I put on the parts that I do have, which are the two Yamaha chips and this 8 dip uh, IC and the potentiometer. So, just wanted to say um, this is for the AdLib sound card for um, ISA slot. Uh, it's an old sound card. I not too familiar with it myself, but uh, enjoy my video. Thank you. All right, hello again. So, uh, it's the eighth time recording this little intro. So, one thing I forgot to mention is that um, the Yamaha chip, the second Yamaha chip, the 3014B, doesn't have a divot marked into it like this chip to mark pin one. Um, it has this little circle to mark pin one, which is right here. And so the divot, that little hole goes up closest to the little divot on the socket, um, which you may or not may not be installing. Um, just wanted to say that. Uh, enjoy my video. So this is my first time recording my soldering skills. This is awkward. I do have a camera between me, so this is going to be a little difficult. Usually I use a headlamp, uh, which I highly agree getting. One of these guys, it's like 12, 14 bucks, black diamond. Um, so yeah, let us begin. I like to tape with like blue painters tape components onto the board so I don't have to hold them uh, onto the board. Uh, so you can, uh, you can also bend the pins on these over, although these are a little short, you can bend them. So I just like kind of just taping it as good as I can and that will usually hold the components on there. And I try to make sure that's got a good, yeah, so you could hold it and bend these pins over. That's a way of doing it, getting it nice and tight on the board. Uh, I don't necessarily like doing that. I just like starting them in place. So uh, let's get my soldering iron up. I like using a fan to get away the noxious fume, although I am pretty far away from the actual fumes, it may not be an issue today. So let's try this. Sorry. Some people like to do a little dab. So you can, there's a number of ways of just might have I'm using um, this solder today. I don't know if you can get that on the camera. I have to autofocus it a little better than I currently do. I'm not a professional YouTuber. I always imagined I'd be, but try this from our way. Now you can, I got a little bit of something on mine. Let's see. Yeah, that, do it. Try not to breathe in the noxious fumes. Now I'm nervous to get this going. So it takes one pin. It's hard to see if I've got that one. You also want to avoid cold, what are called cold solder joints. Although if you're soldering this, uh, I like tacking it both ends like this to kind of get it in place. I don't have to worry about it too, too much. Not well, necessarily good solder on that last one there, but we'll go through. So now we've got to go through and solder all 24 pins, which shouldn't take too long. It doesn't take a lot of solder to do that. So you guys are getting a better view of this than I. I wish we could be a little bit closer up on the board. Okay. 
takes a good eye. You also want to avoid solder bridges between these pins. I'm going to kind of angle this a little bit better for my hand. So this goes a little better for me so I can rest it. I'm, a, I'm not a professional solder. I've built a few kits. Try not to inhale the noxious fumes. It is toxic. Try to use as little solder as possible, but I also want to get these in place. It goes fairly quickly. I might have to re go over some of these. On a fast process. I'd like to thank Dave for getting me to do this. Let's see. I think this light, I can actually see if some of those. I might have to re might have to go over a couple of those real quick. This one in particular. solder. You can use, there's a cheat to all this and that is using um, surface mount which is just takes a uh, embossing. Uh, God, I need to get that right. Right there on it. Use a embossing gun and you don't need a soldering iron although it's a good idea to do this. Let's see, just double checking my work there guys. All right, make sure that's all good. And now we're on to the second row pins. So this board uses non-leaded uh, solder, which I was a little worried about this tacking. Well, it looks like it's pretty good. I may not have the best soldering technique in the world. That works. So I'm using rosin core lead solder. It's usually the easiest to work with. I think that's it for that guy. Double check my work. Redo that pin. So I think I did not on that one. That looks good. Looks like I got all of them. I might have to redo that file pin. Uh, that's our first. That's our first component on the AdLib sound card. Uh, now going down here to the eight dip. Uh, socket. I use sockets because I want to save these chips for future generations of retro people. I hope we're in focus. Let's see. Yep, we're in focus. Move that a little bit over. I hope my head's not getting in the way for you guys. So, use the technique I just used before, which is just tap. Remove my tape. Points are on. So, putting on integrated circuits, you get them and they're a little spread out like this. Although these came off of another board, so they should be able to go right in. Yep, looks like I can just push them right in. Get a little bit of gumption. Okay, I might have to squeeze them down a bit. Bend the pins in just a little bit to get them go in. See, I seem to have bent 
one of the pins. Always good to have pliers around to I'm used to these chips being a little bit more workable. Again, I am not a professional. So you want to look and see if any of the pins that I didn't see that one. That's why we double check our work. So apparently, be very gentle with these old chips. I'm used to being a little bit more rougher with integrated circuits. It's all trial and error, boys. And that's a Yamaha. It's the heart of the sound car. That is the YM3812. Um, so double check and see if they have pins bent in. Looks like they've gone in. They put in its companion, the FM uh, generator, the YM3014, which is a. Uh, what it's called. It's labeled U2, I believe, on the board. U7, I'm sorry. This one also needs a little bit of work. You need to press in a little bit. You can use pliers to do this too. Be a little bit more effective than I. So make sure all the pins go in. Let's a dip. If you're building, if this is your first kit build if this is your first and congratulations this is very complex uh, wish you the best of luck and that goes right in check my pins we have the first two bits on the board I'm going to install uh, much components the LM 386N4 which is a transistor board and I'm going to put that in at U9. The, bo the board is listed by the build of materials, so U9 would be, let's see here, U9 is up here. So, take a look at the little dip, the little divot in there, match it up with the divot on the board. And you can usually, if you bent your chip right, bend them a little bit. Good. Always double check your work, make sure you get everything right. Uh, you can uh, get the sockets for this as well. Uh, you have to measure, you have to get the right one. I'm not sure if you can use the same one as this for the Yamaha chip. So I'm gonna take that same bit of blue tape as I did before, put it over the chip, hold it with my other pair of hands. Now, I am going to bend the pins on this to, use, to show you what that looks like. So, uh, what I usually do, so this is the chip, this is the back. Uh, it seems they're really cut off. So, anyways, I um, guess I got lost. You bent over the chips like this. I think my uh, little SLR is overheating. But, uh, alright, so I'm going to solder that in place. Uh, this will be a little easier for me. I'm going to angle this again. That's a little better, so you can see it's down here. It's down here. Uh. Ah, it's stuck. Let's be, try not to use a lot of solder. Try to avoid solder bridges. Solder bridges. That is a successful installation. And now it's in there forever. Last bit I'm gonna do 
is the potentiometer, which is your volume controller. And it goes right here. The uh, headphone jack goes right here. Um, to do that, I'll just flip it on my board and put it in. So There's this, the three, and you got to line them up. So this is the only component so far that we're going to have to clip off using my little side clippers here. And here we go. So now you have the option of holding it with a hand and then what you can do is bend these in any direction. I like bending them in the same direction. Keeps it nice on the board. On the board you can go either direction. Keep one on the board. Uh, yeah. To me, because that doesn't feel so solid, I'm going to use the same bit of tape to kind of hold it against the board. Do the last pieces. Do my other pair of hands. And here we go. Uh, you can use a port device. Um, you can do this on the ground. Would not recommend that. I mean, on like a table. I have a little bit of tin foil to protect my wood table from falling bits of solder. Not the greatest technique, but it seems to be working for me. Let's set for a bit. I am using the cheapest welding, weller soldering iron you can get. It's a $40, it's WC, like 110, I think, soldering iron. That's in place. That's pretty solid, I think. Let's see any, oh, I think that middle pin might need a little bit more work. Let's see here. Ah, looks good. All right, so I'm just going to go in, chop them off. And that is everything that I have gotten so far on this board. So that is my completed, not completed, but almost complete, uh, ad-lib sound card with all the components that I have so far.